The Tempest. Once, many years ago, King Alonso of Naples was on a voyage with his son, Ferdinand. They had brought many servants with them, as well as their friend, Duke Antonio of Milan, and Gonzalo, his courtier. The wind was brisk, and they were making good progress, but then a huge storm blew up out of nowhere. They were tossed about on enormous waves, and their ship was smashed to pieces. All the people were left clinging to driftwood and fearing for their lives. The waves carried King Alonso, Duke Antonio, and Gonzalo to the shore of a lush island, shaken but unharmed. The men thanked their lucky stars that they were safe, but Alonso wept for his son, Prince Ferdinand, who had been lost in the sea. They believed the island to be deserted. Little did they know that three pairs of eyes were on them as they crawled up the sandy beach. An old man named Prospero, his beautiful daughter Miranda, and his servant, a tree spirit called Ariel, were standing on top of a high cliff watching the survivors straggle to shore. So, there are other people in the world, Miranda breathed in astonishment. Are they here to harm us? You have nothing to fear, Prospero assured her. I actually know these men. You were too young to remember it. But before we lived on this island, I was the Duke of Milan, which is a very large and famous city. One day, my brother, Antonio, decided that he wanted to be the duke instead of me. He hired army soldiers to kill me. That man down there is Antonio. Prospero pointed at the bedraggled duke. Miranda gasped. Oh, how horrid! What if he means to harm us again? Don't worry, my dear, Prospero soothed her. He has no idea that we are here. Besides, the way we escaped last time was with the help of a good man named Gonzalo. He was one of my courtiers. He helped me take you and my magic books to a small boat. We set sail and arrived here, where we've been ever since. And that man down there, he pointed, is Gonzalo himself. Miranda felt calmer and decided to go for a walk. When she left, Prospero and Ariel stayed to watch the men start to explore the island. You didn't tell her it was a storm that you conjured that brought them here, Ariel pointed out. Well, there is no need to trouble her, Prospero said. She wouldn't understand why I want revenge, but I will have it. And then, Master, will I be allowed my freedom? Ariel asked. Before Prospero had arrived on the island, Ariel had been trapped inside a tree. Prospero's magic had freed him from the tree trunk, but he became magically bound to Prospero as his servant. Ariel longed to be fully free. Yes, once my revenge is complete, then you will be free, Prospero promised. I just need you to do a few more things for me first. A short while later, on another part of the island, Prince Ferdinand staggered ashore alone. He called for his father and companions, but there was no answer. He walked up the beach and into the thick tangle of trees beyond. Is anybody there? He called as he walked. I am, a voice answered. The most beautiful girl he had ever seen stepped out from behind a tree. It was Miranda. You are a vision, Ferdinand gasped. You are a wonder, Miranda whispered. You are talking to my daughter, said Prospero, appearing through the undergrowth. May I ask who you are, young man? I am Prince Ferdinand, he replied. My ship was wrecked, and I washed up here. I was searching for my father, the king, and our friends. Father, he is perfect, Miranda said. And I like you too, Ferdinand said. Prospero was secretly pleased that Miranda liked the prince, but he wasn't sure if the prince was worthy of his daughter. He took him prisoner and made him chop wood to test him. Before Prospero and Miranda had come to the island, it had been the home of a wild man named Caliban. 
When they had arrived, Prospero had captured him and made him a servant. Caliban bitterly resented Prospero and was always looking for a way to free himself and have his revenge. Caliban was wandering around a rocky part of the shore, grumbling to himself about Prospero, when he came across two figures struggling out of the surf. It was Trinculo, a shy court jester, and Stefano, a butler. The three men quickly found that they had a lot in common. All of them were servants, and none of them particularly liked their masters. Ariel heard their voices from across the island and came hurrying to see what was happening. He turned himself invisible and watched as the three of them agreed that they could do a better job of running things than their masters. Caliban and Trinculo agreed that they could all stay on the island together and make Stefano their leader. But before they could do that, they needed to get rid of Prospero. Ariel hurried back to Prospero to tell him what he had just heard. Well, this is a busy day indeed, Prospero exclaimed. My daughter wants to get married. I am about to have revenge on my evil brother, and now my servant has decided to get rid of me? What shall we do, master? Ariel asked. Prospero sat down. You know, Ariel, people think that ruling is just having your own way the whole time, but it's not. It's hard work full of difficult choices. Caliban and his friends aren't thinking about the hard work. They are thinking about bossing people around and wearing fine clothes. I bet a fancy outfit will be enough to distract them from their mission. So Prospero and Ariel found all the brightest and finest clothes they could. They transformed some of Prospero's old things with magic and pulled other clothes from the king's trunk, which had washed up on the shore. Then they hung them up in the forest near Prospero's study and hid to wait. Soon Caliban, Trinculo, and Stefano came trampling through the trees. The plan worked perfectly. Caliban spotted a bright yellow scarf and pulled it down. Trinculo selected a fine hat. Stefano kept his mind on the mission a little longer until his eye was caught by a fancy shirt. While they were distracted, Ariel clicked his fingers, and dozens of spirits in dog form leapt out from the undergrowth and chased the three men away. Prospero and Ariel chuckled as they emerged. You see, Ariel, Prospero said, finery was what they really wanted. Now he clapped his hands. It's time to speak to all of our guests. Please bring everyone to me. Ariel whipped around the island, bringing all the castaways, as well as Miranda and Caliban, to Prospero's woodland study. King Alonso was thrilled to see his son again, and pleased to meet the beautiful young girl he was smitten with. Gonzalo and Prospero had a happy reunion, while Antonio looked on angrily. Prospero held up a hand for silence. Earlier today, many of you were shipwrecked on this island. I conjured the storm myself to bring you all here, for I am Prospero, the old Duke of Milan, and I wished to have revenge on my brother Antonio for stealing my position. Many of the castaways gasped in shock. I always heard you mysteriously disappeared, King Alonso said. I had no idea Antonio had done it. For shame. Antonio scowled sulkily. Prospero smiled at the king. Thank you, your majesty. But now that I see Antonio, I know I do not need to take revenge after all. His hair is white before its time. His face is wrinkled. His eye bags tell me he doesn't sleep well at night. The worries and demands of ruling Milan have punished him better than I ever could. Tell me, Caliban, do you and your friends still want to rule the island? Caliban, Trinculo, and Stefano quickly shook their heads. My only other reason for wanting revenge was for the wasted life of my poor daughter, Miranda, Prospero continued. She has grown up on this lonely island, and I did not want her to be stuck here forever. But now she has met Prince Ferdinand, and they are in love. Miranda, my dear, I give you my blessing. You may marry him. 
Oh, father, Miranda rushed forward to give Prospero a big hug before she embraced Prince Ferdinand. Prince Ferdinand dropped the bundle of wood he had chopped. Thank goodness for that. At that moment, two sailors came pushing through the crowd. Another ship is here to take us home, they cried. Everyone started to make their way to the ship, except Prospero. Miranda paused and asked her father to come too. Prospero shook his head. My work in the world is done, my dear. I am going to give up my magic and live quietly on this small isle for the rest of my days. Ariel piped up. Master, before you give up your magic, you promised I would be free. Indeed, I did, Prospero agreed. He raised his staff and a glow surrounded Ariel. Everyone watched in wonder as Ariel floated up into the air. When he floated down again and the glow faded, he didn't look any different except for the huge smile on his face. Will you leave now? Prospero asked. Ariel shook his head. No, I would like to stay right by your side as friends. So, Prospero and Ariel lived out their days in peace. Miranda married Prince Ferdinand, and when it was their time to rule, they never forgot Prospero's wise advice.